and we're live just like that look at that it's like magic Sh- sean daney how are you i'm doing great man how are you i'm good man uh you know thank you so much for reaching out to me um uh as you know um uh, this is a, a podcast that's typically music related mm-hmm. but uh i, I did want to uh create it to uh you know just talk about good people doing good things and you reached out this with this like video this new this new video and i thought i was getting spammed and i'm glad you said i wasn't spammed because i was like what is going on here Did this guy get hacked yeah it, well especially because i sent it in messenger right so that makes right. it even more sketchy yeah so uh, i mean sean i know of you uh thank you to the internets um yeah. Uh, I, I know your name. You're always very supportive of what I do. I, you know, you're commenting, you're liking. So thank you for all that. Um, yeah. And I know that your name is associated with Benchmark Mortgage. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, which um, my my home mortgage is through uh, Benchmark. Uh, yeah. So when you reached out to talk about what we're going to talk about, I was pumped. I'm, I'm glad you uh, did what I do, and I'm glad you find value in it. And uh, I wanted to get to know the, the the guy behind the name that I've seen. I appreciate that. And it's the same, you know, because I think, you know, so often there, I have a lot of relationships kind of like the one that you and I sort of have right on, on social media, because we meet a lot of people. And I think that gives us a platform to connect, but yet you and I have never really connected face to face. And, uh, you know, and obviously I've been following the podcast and the things that you're doing. I'm, I'm a music guy. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm not unfortunately blessed with the voice or the talent to do anything in space. Same. I worked at the gallery sound for a long, long time, if that counts. <laughs> um, so that's one better than me. Yeah. Right. You know, so, uh, but I, I, but no, I, think, like, I, I think I applied at the gallery sound. I didn't get in. Oh my gosh. Yeah, uh, they, they made it very difficult. They wanted people who really knew music. And I guess at a young age, I didn't know it yet. Sure. You know what the you know what the caveat is is that like I I knew it so well then right and uh, nowadays like I always thought that was a skill that I'd carry with me but I've stuck with the genre you know like in in, in that specific era of music that I like so much and and the new stuff I'm at a loss I would I would not get the job today yeah it's tough and you know it's funny because I I worked I've worked a lot with uh, Joe Nardone Jr. Yeah. Over the my time at the Weekender and then in radio, and he was just actually at Axel Rad where I work now, picking up some shirts for Record Store Day. Yep. So it's funny that you know, as a young, like, not probably sixteen years old, I was, I so badly wanted a job at the uh, the Gallery of Sound, but um, my test taking abilities weren't uh, at peak performance. And now I, I work with Joe on a, on a regular basis, so it's kind of funny how things work out. It is. And, you know, for me, like at that time, that was really the only job I wanted. You know, I was like an MTV kid, you know, like so I, I, I had to work at the Gallery Sound. And I started there back in the days when like it was the corner and, you know, had a sneaker store uh, where the Orange Julius once was. And then it mm. became a sneaker store. And, you know, then then it expanded out to the corner, you know, and had that whole corner of the mall. Um, it was a fun, it was a fun time to, to be part of the gallery sound, but you know, what probably remains one of the best jobs I ever had, um, I've ever had. And Joe remains a friend and they're just, they're just good people. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. It was good seeing him the other day, but we're here to talk about you. Yeah. So give me, give me a little bit of a background before we get into, uh, what you're here to talk about. Talk to me about who Sean Daney is. Oh man. So that's, you know, that's, that's complicated. That's complicated. You know, I mean, who is Sean Daney? So uh, I'm a, a probably above all things, uh, I'm a husband and a father. I mean, that's the great joy of my life. And I've been, you know, blessed with uh, an amazing family and my kids that keep me busy. They're my best friends. Um, so, you know, that's probably, you know, paramount. Um, I uh, was in the commercial printing business for 20 plus years um, with a company called Pain Printery out in the back mountain. Um, you know, that's how like most people locally probably know me in that way. Um, and, you know, we had a business that was doing great for a long time. And I, I started to notice the industry changing, you know, and I think it's, an, uh, you know, it's an industry that, you know, has its niches and those companies, there are companies within the space that are thriving. Um, but for us, the market that we served, the technology was changing, um, you know, more monies were shifting to digital channels. Like I started to see a trend that was a challenge long-term. Um, you know, ultimately we, we ended up selling the business in 2019. And when we did that, 
uh, we were acquired by a company called Alcom Printing Group out of Harleysville. And Alcom are great, they're great people and uh, they welcomed us in. We kept a small staff here in the back mountain to manage our accounts and help transition things in. But, uh, you know, I knew long term that, you know, print, you know, wasn't it wasn't going to be for me long term. Um, but I wanted to kind of, like I said, stay on and help transition accounts in. And, you know, it was just kind of serendipitous in how it happened. You know, like my father, my father, when I grew up, was in the savings and loan industry, which is nearly non-existent or non-existent now. And at the time, he was, I believe, president of the uh, Homeowners Association, local homeowners, uh, home builders association. Um, you know, was very involved in the mortgage business and, and loved it. Uh, and I, as a kid, I knew he was in banking, was in finance. Beyond that, you know, not not much uh, until everything sort of blew up in that world. Um, and then, I, you know, Eric McCabe, much like you, I was a client. You know, my wife and I, right out of school when we were engaged, uh, you know, we didn't know what we were doing. We wanted to buy a house. Somehow we got referred into Eric and uh, we just became quick friends. You know, he gave us guidance and we, we had done several transactions because as our family grew, so did the need for space. Um, Eric was always there and, and, and his wife Anne and my wife became very good friends and he and I became very good friends. So we're out having dinner one night, probably August of last year. Right. And, uh, he's like, so, you know, what's your plan? You know, he's like, I know you don't want to stay in print, you know, what's your trajectory? What do you intend to do? And I mean, to be honest with you, I was, I was not sure. Um, just considering the gallery sound, uh, if Joe would have me back, uh, <laughs> And he's like, listen, he's like, why don't you, why don't you, you know, consider the mortgage business, consider benchmark, you know, because it's hard to get good people in, in any business. Uh, it's a challenge. And he said, you know, ultimately, you know, when, when, what happens in that business is the loan officers get very busy, knee deep in the, in, in the projects, in the paperwork, you know, helping the client, you know, but, but all those clients, you know, generally come in through referral sources. And it's very important that lenders like any lender really are, are providing value to those referral sources. And I think Eric was like, this is, you fit this bill perfectly. You know, you come in, you can learn this market, you know, you can build these relationships, you can provide value. And I took a leap of faith <laughs> is really how that happened. And so in September, I ended up starting to work with Benchmark and uh, it's been great. It's been a great experience. Too, too much. The two, no, like, no, too that's that's what I wanted. Uh, and what position do you hold there? So I'm a hybrid position for them. So I'm 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 like I'm a license or, or lo I'm a licensed loan originator in the state of Pennsylvania, but mainly so that I can have those conversations. I'm not originating loans for Benchmark, right? So we have a team of loan officers. So I'm doing a few different things. I'm managing the marketing side of the business. Um, I'm out trying to strengthen existing relationships, build new ones. Um, I'm, I'm also like, if, and the funny part about that bucket is like, I legitimately am just paid to kind of help, like to kind of get out and provide help where needed. Um, then there's a recruitment bucket, you know? So we, we have some goals to expand the business and grow into new areas. And so I'm doing research, I'm vetting potential candidates, um, you know, actively seeking people that, that fit a profile. You know, we're looking for certain type of people to join the business. Um, and, and that's new to me. So I'm learning that as I go. Um, so those are really the primary buckets, you know, it's, it's building those relationships, it's strengthening existing ones, it's working on the recruitment side, um, and helping to promote the business. And, and then there's like kind of what led to today's conversation. So one of the things that I really loved about Benchmark is uh, they're a charitable, like organization, you know, uh, they encourage people to raise money for nonprofits and support nonprofits and engage the community as much as they can. And I've always really wanted to do that. Um, so, and I, I'm sorry, because I know I'm talking a lot, but this is a good yeah, story. Go for it. You know, so when I joined the company, one of the first uh, things that I was exposed to was, was, a veterans, uh, was a veterans event in the Lehigh Valley with one of our other branches. And there I met a gentleman by the name of Amos Benjamin. Well, first of all, there was a, a gentleman by the name of Chad Fleming, a gentleman by the name of Amos Benjamin, and these guys are, you know, these are real American heroes. These are guys that put their lives on the line and, and made sacrifice. And, you know, Amos uh, suffered a traumatic brain injury. And um, and uh, Chad, I believe, was, you know, involved in, uh, I, I believe it was basically an attack with an explosion on his caravan, um, you know, and was actually 
I believe, you know, I want to give the wrong information, but, you know, Chad redeployed, um, you know, basically after a, having a prosthetic leg, you know, and so I, I had dinner with these guys and was up at four in the morning hiking with Amos in Lehigh Valley. And I, I left there and I was like, oh, my God, like, truthfully, I like never felt like less of a human being, <laughs> you know, um, it's amazing what these guys are doing. Um, and this community is one that needs support. And so it's it's a big deal for Benchmark. I mean, now Benchmark a, is a residential lender. Right. So so they don't they're not they don't only do VA loans. They're VA loan specialists for sure. You know, and they're a company that will bend over backwards for that community. Um, you know, and that was a big part of it. They're like, listen, you know, please engage this community and look to support these organizations. And it was actually Amos Benjamin that, you know, did, having dinner one night told me about a race that he put together down south and uh, what a tremendous impact it had. And I'm like, you know, we're, we're going to do that here. And, and, you know, the hometown heroes 5k was born. Isn't it amazing when you meet people and they make you feel like you're lazy and like, yeah. you're just not yes. doing enough. <laughs> right. Does it happen too often? I, I, yeah. And it's kind of like, man, maybe I'm just really not uh, doing the, my part. I don't, I don't know. You know what's, what's funny. What's funny is, you know, it's, there's that for sure. But I would say that when, when I, when I say, what, what, I, what I think I meant by that is these are guys that are so inspirational, you know, like, you know, Amos said to me when we were chatting and I even told him that I'm like, wow, like it's, you know, I, I that exact thing, boy, I've, I've never felt like less of a human being. And he's like, listen, he's like, here's the thing you have to understand. Um, he's like, you don't have to have worn a uniform to serve, you know, and, and he's like, you can serve this community just by going out. And, and truthfully, like, it's, you know, for, for some of these veterans, getting them in a home, it provides a foundation for them that legitimately saves lives, you know, and, and, you know, again, the work that Benchmark does, I, I don't know if I mentioned this, but like, I just got back um, from Texas, I spent a week in Texas, and I attended uh, an event called uh, B- Boot and Shooting <laughs> and, uh, on Thursday. And it's it's their big fundraiser in in Texas. Uh, it's 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 hosted at the Dallas Gun Club, I believe, um, and it's a day of skeet shooting and silent auctions. And they have this every year. And every year, th- this event draws such a huge crowd that you know they raise north of a million dollars every year. And they support uh, an organization called the Brain Treatment Foundation. One that's and that's how we came to 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 know of Amos Benjamin, right? Because he suffered a traumatic brain injury. And, and the treatment, the, there's effective treatment for these uh, brain injuries, but it's very expensive. Um, so Boot and Shoot was created to, to, to fund scholarships that would allow those that suffered from traumatic brain injury to get access to that care. Um, you know, and coming back from that event, just, it just, I would love to see something like that here locally, something where the community just really uh, embraces it and supports it. And, and I'll tell you, just like you agreeing to jump on, you know, this podcast and help me to get the word out. Um, it's incredible. The response that we've received so far, it's, it's really amazing. People, people are embracing it. And so I'm hoping that uh, we have an amazing day. Yeah. Well, let's get right into it. I mean, uh, yeah. you reached out hometown heroes, 5k uh, coming up on June 11th at Kirby park. Um, mm-hmm. Talk a little bit about that event and uh, what people can expect, what people can do to sign up, what they can do to, to volunteer, all that kind of stuff. Sure. So right out of the gate, the, the, best re, the best resource for the race is the website, right? Which is very easy. Just hometownheroes5k.com. And on that website, you'll, you'll find a link to register for the event. Um, you'll be able to learn about all of our amazing sponsors. That list is growing by the day. Um, you'll be able to read about Camp Freedom. So Camp Freedom is our beneficiary this year. Um, So since I have been with Benchmark, I've been working to engage a lot of these local uh, veteran and first responder groups uh, and charities and trying to help uh, support them and raise funds. And I had not had an opportunity to, to do something with the good people at Camp Freedom in Carbondale. Uh, I was up at their facility um, they took the time to give me a tour and what they do is, is, is they provide healing through outdoor activities for disabled first responders, uh, and veterans. 
you know, where whether that's a hunt or whether that's a hike or whether that's fishing, um, they have events throughout the year and they bring people in in small groups. So that creates a camaraderie um, and there's a healing process to that. You know, there, there's a common thread uh, that you tend to find when really engaging with our veteran community, um, you know, and some of the things that they go through. Uh, and what is that? commonality. What is that? Say again. What well, would you say that is? The the common thread. Well, you know, look look at the suicide rate right among veterans. It's astronaut. It's astronomical. You know, and um, you know, I think that there's a lack of community. There's a lack of support for these individuals, and when they return home and try to adjust to normal life, um, and you know, Amos is an example of that. He tells an amazing story. We had him in last, uh, actually, I want to say maybe November of last year, um, and held an event up at the Mohegan Sun. And he tells a little bit about, you know, the, the path that he's been on and how he's landed today. And it's, it's in, it, it's, it's both incredibly sad. Um, but in also incredibly inspirational, um, is the best way to describe it. But so many veterans that I've connected with have walked that path. Mm -hmm. And, um, sometimes it just takes, organizations like Camp Freedom, you know, and we have a lot, you know, Warrior Strong and um, who else do we have locally? Um, I'm trying to think, of, you know, of course it escapes me now, but, you know, we, we have a number of Equines for Freedom, another great local group, um, Heroes Hearthstone, another great local group. There are these small little um, veteran charitable organizations that are out trying to do good. But when you have lots of people doing small acts of good, they collectively accomplish big things. Yeah. And that's really great. I mean, and I don't want to make this a, a political thing or, or no. anything like that, but you know, it, it's, that's exactly what you said. It's a common theme and yeah. it's, you're, we're constantly hearing, you know, the, our veterans come home and they're, they're not taken care of. And, you know, from what you've witnessed and, and maybe you don't know, but I, I'm yeah. curious to, to pick your brain, what, what else could be done? I mean, I feel like all the, the work and all the, the pressure is, is, you know, the people around them, which is fine. It's great. I mean, I'm glad there's groups like, you know, the, what you mentioned, and there's people like you, you know, recognizing this and, and doing something about it, but like, what else can be done? I mean, I mean, it has to come from the government, right? Yeah. And there are resources there. Right. And, and, and so it's hard for me to answer the question, right. Because yeah. my exposure truthfully has been since September. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, to, to really kind of dig into that because there are there are resources available um, but but even in, even with that in place right I still hear these same stories yeah. and it takes these other groups outside the government to you know to make an impact so I, you know I, I don't know I, I wish I could answer that question I, I'm hoping right that in time I can because I'm hoping to be more involved Um but yeah, I don't, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's a shame, but again, like I have people, I've had people reach out to me. They've connected to Amos, right. Um, you know, who's, who lives, you know, Amos lives South, right. He said it a million times, but I can't, you know, so Amos lives down South and uh, somehow local people have connected to Amos just probably, you know, maybe from our event, maybe from other things that he's done. Amos will be in Allentown on Wednesday. I'm going to Allentown to visit with him on Wednesday. Um, they've connected to him for support. He's connected them with me. And then I've put them in touch with the contacts I've made with these local organizations. But, you know, there's definitely other resources available to them. And yet they find themselves to guys like me. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's, I think it's a I think it's a really complicated question. Yeah. I didn't want to put you on the spot, but I didn't no, know how okay. much I didn't know how much you, you know may have seen already but yeah it's a, it's a shame but um yeah. you know thankfully like i said there's there's people like you and there's organizations like benchmark and uh the things you mentioned earlier so you know the goal for hometown heroes obviously the beneficiary is camp freedom yeah um can you talk about the event itself yeah so basically what we're trying to do with the event was when i was trying to come up with hey we, number one it's like we're gonna have a 5k we're going to do it as a walk run because we want it to be accessible to all skill levels. If you want to come and go hard, right. And, and, and go for a personal best, right. A PR do it. Right. If you know, when you want to win your age group, do it. Um, if you want to come with your family and walk it, do it. You know, like I, I just want community engagement and involvement. Right. So whether you're there to walk or run, we just want you there. Right. So what, what will happen when you get there? So 
um, we're going to have something that we're calling a hero mile, which the way we envision it is this. So the course was ultimately, I took bits and pieces from, do you remember the Wilkes-Barre duathlon? Sean, <clears throat> we've never met face to face, um, but I can assure you that my body uh, isn't meant for running. Uh, I can, I barely walk. Right. So no, I, I mean, I heard of it obviously, so but yeah. We, we had an event uh, around the square uh, called the Wilkes-Barre Duathlon, and it, and it took place, a, a piece of it on the square, a piece of it on the levee system, you know, so it was a walk-run, and it was an awesome event. I really enjoyed it, and then ultimately, it went away. But I thought to myself, okay, so if we're going to do this 5K, I wonder if we could take pieces of that course, because I like that course, and it's accessible, like I said, to, to all skill levels, and how do we take that and amend it? So. We created a course that that takes place through Kirby Park and along the levee system and then down along the lower stretch of Nesbitt Park. And what's beautiful about it is it, you never encounter traffic. The entire course, right, is off of roadways. Like, which, so I said, it's wonderful for families because it's incredibly safe. Um, and what will happen is when you ultimately will go down the levee, you'll hit a turnaround point when you get how far out. And then you're going to turn around, you're going to be routed back. But when you're routed back, we're going to take you down the lower section of Nesbitt Park, right? Right along the river. Are you familiar with that area? The yeah. The boat launch area? Yep. So we want to create in that space what we're calling the hero, a hero's mile, the hero mile. And so we're going to line that roadway with first responder vehicles, with military vehicles. Um, you know, I met with, uh, with the armory and, and, you know, filed some paperwork and, they're going to be there on site. They're bringing, bring a tank. They're going to bring a Humvee. You know, we're hoping to have police vehicles, ambulance, um, mission barbecues, bring in their big rig to bring down the hero mile. Um, and what I, what I love about it is again, if spectators come down, number one, it creates a really unique section for race participants um, and an idea to really connect with the community we're trying to support. Um, but the other cool thing about it is, is with those vehicles, will be representatives from that borough or for from that armed forces group right and so the community can actually engage with these people you know have conversations with them talk to them about their day um and i think it just i think it just brings something special uh just brings something special to the event and i think you told me that there's going to be you said like military and, and first responder vehicles like so if you had a, a child or you know would that be okay to bring them to the event and have them experience? Yeah, a hundred percent, you yeah. know, and that's, that's really what I'm hoping for. You know, I, I would love to see families there wa walking it together, or just coming down to support it. Um, you know, we had engaged with the Luzerne foundation. So like doing this, right. I had never done that before. And so I'm like, Hey, I want to create this race, but you know, benchmark is, is a, is a business entity. This is a charitable uh, race. And so they're like, look, at, we need to find a way to do this that's incredibly transparent. Um, and so it was somehow suggested that I connect with the Luzerne Foundation. So like, I, I know the Luzerne Foundation, like I know Johnny Popko, right? Like I know them, right? But we hadn't really met. And so I knew a little bit about what they did. Um, and I kind of casted a line out and reached out to them and said, hey, like I was told that you may be able to help with what I'm trying to do here. Um, and they did, and they and they did it in such a wonderful way. They're like, oh my gosh, like you know, please come down and meet with us. Um, tell us about the event. They loved the idea of something like this in the community. They feel like the timing is right. You know, like coming into the summer, like it's the right time for people to come out and just do something outside. Um, and and what was cool was so they basically set up. We set up the race organization as a fund of the Luzerne Foundation. Right. So all sponsorship dollars, all those donations, um, all that stuff goes into our fund with the Luzerne Foundation. And, and so we have control over how the funds are managed, but they manage all of the nonprofit aspects of a race like this, you know, which, to be honest with you, I don't know. I don't know that stuff. Sure. Um, so they kind of really came in and they're, they're doing some heavy lifting. You know, we're, we're organizing the event. They're managing the transparency of the transaction and you know, really there are charitable arm for the, for the race. So they've been pretty wonderful through the process. That's smart because, you know, there's oftentimes 
um, things like this are put together and you hear horror stories about, you know, a fraction of the money going to the, the cause, yeah. uh, you know, maybe it's, you know, <laughs> Sean put it on for himself, <laughs> right? Obviously not right. the case, you know, this is all yeah. um, up and up, but yeah, it's, 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 it's a shame that, you know, people have taken advantage of, of things like that, but, um, so that's smart to do. Obviously this is all on the up and up and full transparency. And, uh, I mean, as far as the Lunzern foundation, like what, um, I, I've never even heard of that before. Sure. sure. You know, what are they, what do they do? So what's, so they, they have this awesome little building, um, just very close to the accelerator, right? So, you know, the accelerator okay, yeah. building in Wolfsbury. Yep. Okay. Shout out to the accelerator. Um, the, if Jones. you're staring at the, what's that? Chris Jones. Yeah, Chris Jones. I, Chris and I worked. I worked with them at LSEO for a time. They have great people there. Oh, okay. um, he's been a, he's been a friend and a, and a good guy. Uh, uh, he's been good to me over the years. So, uh, but anyway, so they they are they are just if you're facing the accelerator, they're like two buildings to the to the right, okay. and they have a small little brick building there, and and they're just a they're like a charitable arm. They have all these funds, right? So you can establish charitable funds within the organization. They help you to manage that aspect of it. Um, they use those funds to support other funds, right? Because, but there's a small, like to manage it, you know, there's like a 1% or something and it's all used to support other funds um, and how it works. But, uh, and so for example, they're like, hey, leaning out to these other charitable funds, how can you guys support the Hometown Hero 5K fund and whatnot? Um, but yeah, I mean, I wish I understood all and how they function, but they're literally, I think their tagline is like, you know, here to do good or something to that effect. You, you know, you have to Google it, but that's legitimately what they're doing. Yeah, for sure. You know, and they, they've, they've created an outlet for me to be able to do this race. Um, like I said, and so it's, they've been great, you know, and Dave, Dave and Diane are the two people that I deal with predominantly there. Um, but yeah, if you ever have a need to do something in that realm, like I'll happily make an introduction. They're, they're great people there. Yeah, there. for sure. Um, you mentioned sponsors, obviously things like this don't happen without them. I mean, uh, right. as a guy who's been in this area, I, I mean, obviously you're very community involved and you're personable and you basically, you know, build relationships. Um, was it hard to get people to, to jump on board and you, do you want to mention some of those sponsors? Yeah. In fact, just so just, you know what I'm doing? I'm pulling it right up because I don't want to overlook a single person because sure. I'm, I'm, I'm legitimately so grateful uh, to everybody that have reached out. And it was amazing. Like I've, that's the, been such a cool part of it. Um, I have like solicited, reached out and said, Hey, like, would you guys support this race to a number of people? Um, no one has told me no. Uh, and I've had people that have called and been like, Hey, like I've heard about this race and I'm, I want to support it. What's your top level sponsor? You know, so I'll just tell you a few of them right now that we have, um, mainly because it's amazing. And I'm so thrilled. Luth and Freeman Real Estate, Independent Graphics, obviously Benchmark Mortgage, Toronto Law, uh, Old Mill Pine, Cap Trust. We then we also have Halibut Blue, Wet Paint Printing and Design, AJ Consultants, uh, JW Hoban Insurance, Garnett Insurance, Benko Dental. Move Better, Eddie Mac Construction, Cohen Haydu, uh, Pennsylvania American Water, and, and and those are the those are just the sponsors. I have a whole list on the site. You can see it too. That are special thanks, and that's to everybody that has lent a hand to help me promote it. Um, like, yeah, I need a PopGo project uh, logo. I want to get it on the site just to just to say thank you. Um, but yeah, like the community has really come out so far. You know, and, and and I'm gonna keep pushing because I want to raise as much as we can. So if someone's listening to this and they say, "Hey, we love to sponsor this race or get involved," you can reach out to me through the website. Um, all my contact information is on there. And listen, I'm happy for ten bucks. I'm happy for five bucks. I'm happy for a thousand. I've had people give me a thousand. You know, so I'm not turning anybody away. You know, because all those monies you know, are going to go to Camp Freedom. And and what I want to do is, again, next year, I want to do this racing in, and I want to find new, you know, veteran or first responder charities so, to support, um, you know, but anything I could do to promote the sponsors that help to make this event a success, you know, I, I'm going to do it. Popco Project, right? So thanks. Yeah, you're welcome. Of course. Um, I was going to ask you if it was too late to uh, to be a sponsor. So that's cool that that's available still. Um, yeah. 
the website yeah. for that again is it's it's a uh, hometown heroes 5k.com cool you know there's uh, like again the race course is on there all the sponsors are on there. information background around camp freedom is on there if you want to learn about who they are what their message is i also have a link with some of those other local veteran charities that i mentioned so if you want to learn about some of those other charities that happen to be local that's on the page too. And you could even, if you want to support them, you can donate to them through this website also, um, which is cool. Um, they're always looking for support. Um, if you're a local veteran or first responder charity and you want to be on this website, I'll put you there. <laughs> like, just reach out to me. You know what I mean? And if you want to have an outlet, I'd love to have you be part of it, you know, and if we can support it. And that's actually another thing that I mentioned. So all of those other charities I've invited to come down, put up a table, you know, spread your message. If you want to talk to people about what you're doing to help that community, please do it. Um, and so that invitation goes out to anybody else, right? If, if, if you have a veteran or first responder organization, if you're trying to do something good, or you, if you're not sure if, if you're okay to be at this event, call me, right? Ask me. Um, that's really what I want, right? Participation. We're going to have an amazing waffle truck there in the morning too. Perfect. That's awesome. <laughs> Everybody loves waffles. Yeah, you should get um that coffee shop abide. Yeah, down yeah. I'll reach out to those guys. I've been there. That's a great spot. It's yeah. a great spot. Sling some coffee. <laughs> yeah, for stuff. sure. Do you have a goal? I don't. You know, I mean, I'll, I'll be honest with you. So, I've never done events. Right in my previous life in the printing business, I've done a lot of things and a lot of marketing related things. I've not organized events. Um. Last year, when they asked me to organize this event at the Mohegan Sun uh, for Amos coming into town around Veterans Day, um, I was like, yeah, sure, you know, I'll, I'll do it. I'll do an event. Um, I really had, I had not done one before, so I was a little moderately concerned. I was a lot concerned, um, you know, but I just started reaching out, you know, making these connections, uh, asking people to support it, asking people to come out, you know, and hear this message because I had heard it. I heard it on a hike at four in the morning in Lehigh Valley, you know, um, and it was, a, it was something worth hearing. His story is just, it's like I said, it's just incredible. It's inspirational. Um, and, uh, but I, so I'm like, okay, now I've got to, I've got to do this event and I'll be honest with you. Like I was shitting, I was straight shitting. And uh, I mean, up until five minutes, like, cause, because what happens is people right in my experience, my limited experience, you go out and people are RSVP you can count on some of those RSVP and not going to be able to make it right. Not mm -hmm. because they had bad intentions, but stuff happens. Right. You know what I mean? You know, a kid gets sick or this happens, work gets called in, whatever that is, right. Things happen. I understand that. Um, but I wasn't sure what to expect. I knew it was going to happen. Um, and I just wanted to have a good showing because I'm new. Right. And so I wanted to show, Hey, look, I, I can, I can make this happen. I can create a successful event. And, I honestly, like I said, you know, Amos traveled in to do this. I wanted to create a good platform for him. Um, so I was feeling a tremendous amount of pressure, like in truth, you know, I was feeling it. And um, I'll tell you what, like we, the event, I got there on the day of the event and uh, sweating bullets, uh -huh. hoping people would show, right. Had a big room, lots of tables, a half hour for the event, like two people came strolling in and I'm like, oh my God, like, that's it. Like all these people, nobody's coming. Um, and I was, I didn't even know what to think. I will tell you, like I was a mess. Um, and then the minute the event was about to start, right? The time, the, the actual start time, people just started rolling in. Um, and we like, we packed the room and it was amazing. Right. And I cannot tell you the relief that I felt, you know, like literally once people were on the mic, like I did like step out, you know what I mean? I had to get out of that room and just be like, you know, like just, just exhale it, uh, drop down to the fetal position for 25, 30 seconds. Nobody saw it. It was cool. Uh, but I had to get that out. Um, and I think so with this event, like I don't have expectations. I really don't because in the end, if we re if we raise $10,000 for this charity, what a huge win that is. If we raise $5,000 for a charity, what a huge win that is. Sure. Um, so I don't have expectations other than the fact that I hope that people come out and support it. I think it's a great family event. It's a great way to get moving, right? Nowadays, you know, we, we all have the ability, like there's so many things out there. Amazon's going to, I don't have to go to the store. You know yeah. what I mean? That stuff's coming to my house. You know, like there's, we have all these options to, to not get up off our butts and, and move. I'm saying, 
here's an amazing cause, right? For us as families, as individuals to, to get out and move and do something together, like and legitimately save lives, right? Like this saves lives, mm-hmm. right? So that's what I hope. I hope people are like, you know what? L- let's do that. Like, let's go out and be a part of something, you know, and let's build something here locally that we can have every year that just does good things. That's, that's, that's my, that's my goal. If there's a goal, I know it's a broad stroke, but Hey, that's the I goal. Mean, you got to start somewhere, right? You got to start somewhere. Let's get you the first one under your belt that's and it. then we'll make it an annual event. That's the plan. So this is the, and then, so this is the inaugural yeah. hometown heroes 5k. The inaugural. So yep. let's make it, let's make it an annual event. So that way you can go second annual. Yeah. yeah make sure you use the right word though. Cause I, yeah. I, nothing, nothing gets me more angry than people saying first annual. Can't do oh it. yeah, yeah. <laughs> not, not, not possible. Yeah. No, I'm with you. <laughs> and then what's cool is that I could bug you again and yeah. we'll talk about what a great success the first one was. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> but you're right though. And I don't want to get off like, you know, we, we talked about the, the event and all that, but yeah. um, you know, we're living in a time where we need to get out of our houses. And I, I just talked to someone today, you know, they're like there's businesses that are are starting to bring people back to the office. They've been working from home for two years and people are getting very mad that, you know, they, they want to be brought back to the office. And I was like, in my opinion, like, I think going to work is a good thing. Yeah. And you know, they're, they're, they're pounding their chest and saying like, I can get just as much done from home as I can from the office. And I understand that. And I agree with it. And you know, you know what, there's less, less traveling, less pollution, yada, yada, yada. But as humans, yeah. I think we need to be surrounded by other humans. I agree. Yeah. So. And, and honestly, and you're probably the same way, right? So you're a guy that hosts a podcast. So you appreciate social interaction. That, that's what this is. Yeah. Right. And, and I'm like that too. I thrive on it. Right. So when we were quarantining, that was not good for my soul. Right. Sure. Like I'm not a space invader. I'm a hugger for sure. Right. <laughs> you know? But, but, you know, like I thrive on that and I'm not saying I don't mind. I'll work a day from home, you know, or, you know, and you do get stuff done, but, but being around that social aspect, it's, that's why it's so important with kids at school, right? Right. Like for my youngest, my youngest son, Mason, um, for me, like it was heartbreaking for me, right? Because he was in kindergarten when all this happened, missed a lot of his kindergarten year, missed a lot of his first grade year. and Mason, as a result, he is very comfortable being alone, right? And it's very easy for him to sit in his room, you know, and hop on a system with headphones and communicate with his friends. And I understand that's how, you know, that's how communication is done to some degree now, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but I used to come home from work and I'd be exhausted, but then I would come downstairs and I would build a fort. I would play trucks. I, anything he wanted to do, I was going to do because he didn't have the buddies that we had in yeah. kindergarten, first grade, you know? And so I think a lot of families are, they have to be dealing with that same thing. And, and that's why events like this, and there's lots of them. There's lots of these, there's lots of reasons to get out as a family. And that's, you know, for me, it's like, okay, Mason, you know, come down here and we're going to walk this together. Like we're going to, you know what I mean? It's, I think that it's just healthy. To, to get out and to move and and these give us a great reason to do it yeah you know you're, i know that right. i couldn't be the only family that experienced that with my son you know yeah i mean you kind of i i wanted to talk about you know who, who sean danny was as as a family man so that was a good segue into that yeah um do you have one child too i have three three okay yes yeah, yeah. Oh. i have three sons so my wife has four immature men in the house <laughs> perfect <laughs> poor poor I woman so. yeah poor poor that's that's terrible yeah my oldest landon is uh he's 15 he'll be 16 uh in the summer um my middle son eli is 13 and my youngest mason is eight um, so yeah they're my buddies and you know my older two coped with the situation better yeah um, but they still. had already had that friend group you know yeah but that's still tough i mean i, I was fortunate and my son's four so he was you know he's still in uh daycare yeah and he really didn't know what was going on so um yeah it was fortunate and and you know god forbid i don't know how families did it where they had to you know homeschool and virtual 
virtual school like yeah. and have jobs how does that even work i don't even know yeah um but yes yeah, so you're gonna have a, a 16 year old yeah it's gonna be driving oh, yeah so that's gotta be terrifying it's terrifying it's terrifying and you know what i'm i'm doing those things now that like my parents did taking them to the huge parking lot at night right. like teaching them the basics you know teaching them the k-turn and how weird is it when the car has like a backup cam <laughs> like <laughs> I'm like, we this kid's that. gonna just—he's gonna rip it out on the highway. He's got yeah. like all the technology. Yeah. They get it—they got it easy. They do. I drove my first car. I, I drove was a stick. I, I had to learn that way. Yeah, me too. I I the, I remember the first car I bought was a stick, and um, I had to have a friend drive it home because I didn't know I didn't know how to drive. <laughs> you know, they to, don't have to worry about it. Yeah, I was dating a girl. Uh, who lived very close to me right at the road. I could walk to her house and uh, she was 16 a month before I was. Yeah. And uh, her parents had like property that uh, like we was able to drive a car. So actually we actually learned um, driving around her parents' property with a stick because my yeah. car was a stick that I had to learn. Yeah. But yeah. And then I, I remember going for my test and I was praying that I didn't have to do the parallel parking. I guess it was K turn was no problem. Parallel parking yeah. was the issue. Yeah. I yep. failed. I failed. <laughs> I failed my first driver's test uh, without it before I even got on the course. I mean, uh, how about that? <laughs> how did you do I that? Took, I took my aunt's, my mother's car broke down and I was like, you know how it is. You want that driver's license. I'm sure. like, mom, I got to take this test today. Come on. So she's like, oh, call your aunt Shirley and see if you could use her Subaru. <laughs> so I so my aunt Shirley was like, sure. So we go up to the driver's test. You know, and, and I pull in and they're like, oh, show me where this is, show me where that is. And I'm flipping buttons because I had no idea. I'd never right. been in the car a day in my life. And uh, guys writing all the notes down. <laughs> you know, I looked at him. I'm like, I failed this already, didn't I? He's like, yeah, yeah. I said, well, I'm going to rip it around the course anyway for practice. <laughs> so, yeah, that's the first time. Didn't make it. <laughs> yeah, I uh, got I got busted um, during the tests. I don't know if I was speeding or I was going too slow. I just remember him asking me what the speed limit was. And yeah. uh, I was like, I don't, I don't know. Yeah. I have no idea. And he's like, yeah, okay. <laughs> That's not good. Well, you know what the scary thing is too, is like nowadays, like I'll be terrified truthfully. And, and like my kids, like, I'm, like I said, I'm fortunate. Landon is a responsible kid, um, you know, but again, nowadays when we were in the car, we didn't have cell phones, you right. know, nowadays there's so many distractions you know, so my rule with them with driving is the cell phone has to go in the glove box. Right. You know, um, and that only prevents him from being stupid. Right. You know, I try to tell him that like that just keeps you from being stupid. That doesn't mean that, you know, everybody else on that road is is not being stupid. Like, so you have to pay attention. You know, it happens that fast. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, I'll be like a mess. I'm I, like my anxiety is going to be like I'm already stressing about it. It's, and, you know it's scary being a parent, man. And I don't know how old you are. You have three kids. You're, you're obviously in it. You've been doing it for a long time. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I just like, you know, I feel like we sound like we're old people like, Oh, back in my day when it's, but like the world is a different place. It is. Hands down now. And, and it's a different place fast. Yes. Very fast, but it's different that it's different now than when our parents were parents, you know, raising us because there was no internet. There was no, I don't know. There's probably different things to worry about, obviously, but I, there was just like this different generation where, you know, they kind of just let us do our own thing. Like go ride your bikes, be home by, you know, when it's dark outside and shit like that. But yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's, I don't, I don't know. Like I said, my son's four, we have one on the way. Um, I know. I, I, you know, congratulations. I saw that you. on the book. Yes, of course. It's not, it's not real unless it's on on no, social media i know but, um, i know it's got to be on the gram but no i saw that and congratulations I'm, thank I'm you yes yeah, it's, it's it's been a long road um some uh issues and losses along the way and that's yeah. a that's a discussion for another day that's yeah yeah but um yeah but it's a little girl so i know Maybe. how like protective and like worried i am about my son and i can't imagine how i'm yeah. going to be as a father of a little girl it's I'm, I'm still in denial. I keep going to the appointments and they'll, they'll, they know that we know what it is. So they'll like, you know, go, uh, I'll say, you sure you don't see a penis in there? Like, <laughs> did you, did you spell mail wrong? Or did you put an FE on the front of that by accident? Like, yep. So I'm like, and I kind of know what I'm doing with that. I kind of know, like, I'm not a pro, yeah. but I, I, I don't know. So I'm scared. 
terrifying. Yeah. No, listen, I've got, I have two teenage nieces. Um, you know, I do not have daughters, but I have two, te- two teenage nieces and they're, they're terrific and I love them and I'm incredibly stressed about them all of the time. <laughs> you know, I'm like that uncle, unfortunately, you know, <laughs> but uh, so if that's the smallest bit of, you know, what you're experiencing, just start preparing yourself now. Well, yeah, yeah. well, I would say I'm not getting any younger. I'm not getting any skinnier. So I'm like, I got to start doing something. I'm like, thankfully I have a son that hopefully he'll like look out for her. Yeah, because I'm not going to be in any shape to like fight a young man. <laughs> uh, I, I only have one gun. I'm not, you know, I, I, that, that's just for like, that's like locked in a safe. I don't even like plan on ever using that. I've only yep. shot it on the range just so I'm familiar with it. Yeah, that's same uh, with me, by the way. Exact yeah. same story with me. I've got one shoot at the range to be familiar. Exact yeah. same story. Yeah, exact you have to be familiar. Story. You know, you do. But, but yeah, I don't know. Life you know, is, life is. It, it, it is. It's, it's, uh, yeah, the kids, the kids are, like I said, they, they, they have been for me, you know, they're my buddies, you know, like that's, mm-hmm. that's the most important job. Right. So, and you know that, you know, I like, was late tonight cause I was putting my kid to bed. He's like, I said, all right, buddy, you know, go to bed. Like I was going to go up with his mom. And he's like, but I want you to take me. And I'm like, I got, I got some work to do. And he's like, but I want you to take me. So I'm like, okay, no problem. Yeah. So I'll be cool. <laughs> yeah. Always buddy. Always. That's the priority. Yeah. That's the, whenever I'm late for these, it's because I, I try and do them late at night. So that way he's, he's in bed and I can, I can, you know, say good night. Cause yeah, it's important. Yeah. You know that it is absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I wish I would have done it earlier. The whole, the whole kid thing, my wife and I, for different reasons. I mean, my wife, yeah. uh, super smart, um, to a degree, yeah. uh, she decided to go to school for nine years. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So yeah. I say she's smart because she's a pharmacist, so she's very smart. But she yeah. decided to go four years for you know undergrad biology, uh, wanted to be a doctor, then decided she didn't want to be a doctor, uh, she wanted to be a pharmacist. So she did four years, but she decided to do, to do that too late. So she went for a year towards her master's in case she didn't get into pharmacy school, then got into pharmacy school and did four years there. So nine years total. So yeah. she's very smart, but not smart in the sense of like you know mapping things out. But it was good because she's four years younger than me. Yeah. I was, I was an M maybe a little immature. So, yeah. you know, when she was 21, I was 25. We kind of grew up together, uh, had a lot of fun, did some traveling. And I remember saying like, we, we were like, do we want kids? And, and we're having a good time. And I remember we were outside of my friend's house about to go in, you know, to a party he was having. And she said that, you know, she would regret it if we didn't. So we, and I'm like, you're right. Absolutely right. And we had our son and um, yeah. it was life-changing obviously. And yeah. I wish I did it earlier and we wanted to have but, a second that was close in age to him because, you know, she's got three siblings and, but she's her closest is nine years older than she is. Cause she was a, a happy accident. Yeah, me too. <laughs> My sister's 16 years, 17 years older than me. Yeah. Something like that. So good my mother had me when she was 46, I think. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I was, a, I was a happy accident as well. Accident. Right. I was an accident, <laughs> happy, yeah. but an accident nonetheless. Right. right. <laughs> but you know, what's funny though, like, honestly, like, and it, it's probably good that you did it in the way you did it because you have to be ready for that. You know what I mean? There are a lot of people that, that have kids too soon and they're yeah. not ready for that. Like not, not that they're not emotionally ready for it, but it's good to go out and do all those things and travel. You know what I mean? Like, there's no doubt. Like, so we had kids young, my wife and I had kids young, but you know, we both, that's what I wanted. That's what she wanted at that time. We were ready at that time. We were ready young, yeah. um, you know, but I think that like, you, you know, doing it when, when it's the right time for you is makes you better parent. Yeah. Yeah. We just, you know, we, she was in school forever and, you know, between debt and being in school and yeah, all that kind of stuff. It just wasn't, you know, it wasn't in the cards, Yeah, but it's all good. It's all good. It's all good. But I wanted to real quick go back to Benchmark. I have to uh, yeah. give a shout out to Benchmark and because um, I use them, like I said in the beginning, uh, for our home mortgage, yeah. uh, and and almost by accident. Um, I was working at the radio stations at the time, and I wanted to work with a lender that you know did business with me. I'm sure you're the same kind of person. Like you're in the community, you you have these relationships. You want to always utilize them and, and you know if there's people working with you you want to work with them yeah i won't say who it was that's not important but i went with them and the interest rate just wasn't where it 
should have been. And <clears throat> um, I, don't know, I only knew that because you know, everyone's saying how good these rates are. And the person I'm talking to, she's saying, you know, just keep holding off a little bit. They should go down. They should go down. They should go down. Turns out they were holding it kind of high because they didn't want to take on any more mortgages for whatever reason. So I was working with Carmen Winters uh, at Lewis and Freeman. Yeah, I love Carmen. Yeah. He's friend. Yeah, he's a good guy. Good I guy. watched his episode. <laughs> very cool, very cool. Yeah, we, uh, we go back a, a long ways. Yeah. Um, and he, thankfully, I was working with him. He always makes the, the whole process very seamless. And, you know, he had recommendations to of who to use. But I, I said initially, I said I wanted to go this route because, like I said, uh, and this wasn't wasn't happening. And he put me in the direction of benchmark. And between the um, everything just being set up and, you know, being able to the docu-sign everything and there was no having to like, you know, print paperwork and fax things. And like, you know, it was 2020 at the time. I'm like, why are we even faxing things these days? But Benchmark made it so easy. Um, I think we ended up getting everything together in two weeks, which was like, yeah. you know, unheard of. Yeah. But, you know, Benchmark did a great job and they were always so attentive and, and you know, asking things from me that we needed. And, they you know, they never let me, you know, kind of uh, fall off the radar. So, yeah. Well, awesome, man. I'm, I'm glad that you had that experience. I, uh, I think I told you, like I spotted you in the Google reviews the one day and I'm like, Oh man, Hey, can I use this? Yeah, absolutely. But, um, yeah, no, I'm, I, it's listen, it's, they're good people, you know? And like I told you, they've become family to me quick and I've been fortunate, you know, throughout my career to be surrounded by good people and good teams. Um, you know, knock on wood, that's been a great thing. And I think that's, what's really helped, you know, like I couldn't jump into a whole new business. How, how do I go from print to the mortgage business? You know, and, and I, by the way, I reached out to friends that were realtors and like, I really vetted the process, you know, you know, what do you think about this company? Do you know, do you think I could find success in this business? Like I, I did my diligence and vetted them. And, and like I said, that's and Eric's a close friend, but I vetted mm-hmm. them anyway, like just to be safe, you know? Yeah. Um, and I just heard such good things. And like I said, it's, I think I'm able to, I've been able to, 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 to do some good things in a short amount of time because of the people around me there. You know what I mean? It's a testament. One of the coolest things they did, and this is small, but it's always, it's always one of those the small things that happen that really kind of make an impact or, you know, just keep people you know talking about it. Yeah. Um, it was like, they sent me a, like a care package and yeah. in it was a coffee mug, um, a, uh, a black Sharpie marker, packing tape, and I want to say something else, but it was all stuff like practical moving items. And I just thought that was such a brilliant thing. Like, yeah, because most people, they, they, they want to, you know, sign on the dotted line. We're going to take your, 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 your mortgage and you're going to bunch of interest and all that kind of stuff. We'll see you later. Mm-hmm. But I got that package and I was like, that's such a cool, cool little thing to do. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I'm glad, man. I'm glad. I appreciate yeah. it. And like, again, like I think a lot of that, like everything happens for a reason, you know? Like, I, I really believe that, you know, we had been connected for all this time, never really had a chance to really chat. I reached out to you when I saw the Google review. I'm like, oh my God, he's a customer. That's cool. You know what I mean? You let me use it for social. Yeah. Then I, then it was when I saw Carmen's, like I, like I said, I watch it. I watched the show with Carmen's on. I'm like, cause I was thinking, I knew that you focused on the music scene. I love that. Right. Like that's what drew me to the podcast initially, you know, and then I see my boy Carmen and I'm like, <laughs> oh, that's pretty cool. Like, yeah, yeah I got this event. Maybe he'll, maybe he'll have a conversation with me. Oh, and absolutely. I'm so, I'm so glad you reached out. Cause like I said, I, a lot of times it does focus on music, but again, when I, when I launched this whole thing, I wanted it to be a platform for good. I wanted it to be a platform where people can utilize to promote events and you know, cool things going on. And so I was really, th- thank you so much for reaching out. It really, uh, that yeah. means a lot to me to, to, to you know, you, you're paying attention and you know, you, you saw value and, and, in, in this and what it could do for, you know, hopefully getting the word out for your event. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, yeah, I started doing, not only did I want to talk to him because I, I I've known him for a long time and I think he's doing really great things as a realtor. Yeah. Uh, but I started doing like a weekender files, like series and interviewing yeah. past weekender, uh, employees and just yeah. talking about our time, you know, at the weekender. And cause you know, obviously it's not, I think it's still in print now. And I think it prints once a month on a Thursday at the end of the month, which still whatever, but, yeah. um, 
It's I just, loved the weekend. Yeah, it's such a sad, sad thing. It's, I loved it. We had it in the stores, out in the galleries all the yeah, time. It was such a great thing. I mean, I, I, I'm so thankful that I was like even a part of that because I wouldn't be where I am today if it wasn't yeah. for that product. So, sure, sure. But I know we were here to talk about your event. I know we talked yeah. about more than that, but I. That's I, okay. I, I, like, I appreciate the time. I like doing that. I like getting to know the people and, and have them tell the story about, you know, who they are, what, why they do what they do and, you know, their families and things like that. Cause I think it's, you know, I, again, it's like, you know, having those conversations and, and we're people, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's fun. Yeah, it is. I appreciate it. Thank you but so yeah, much. Why don't we wrap things up? Talk about the uh, event one more time and the dates, the website, yep. uh, social media, all that kind of stuff. Great. So, so again, the event is the hometown heroes 5k. You can find all the information about the event uh, and registration at hometownheroes5k.com. We are on Facebook also. If you just look up Hometown Heroes 5K, same thing. You'll find us there. Um, I try to post updates on the race as much as I can. The event will be held on June 11th. Kirby Park Levy area is the course. Again, that's on the website. You can check it out. Um, would love to hear from sponsors. Would love for people to come out and support the event. Um, would love for people to reach out if they're interested in volunteering, because on event day, we're certainly going to need that. Um, and yeah, like I said, this year, we're going to support Camp Freedom. It's an incredible organization doing great things, you know, so come out and help us save some lives. Very cool. Well, Sean, thank you for being one of those shining stars in our community, doing great things and, um, you know, benchmark and all your sponsors that are involved. Um, we, we definitely need more people like you. Uh, so thank you again and uh, best of luck with uh, raising lots of money to help out, you know, people who need it. Yeah, dude. Thank you so much. I appreciate it very much, Johnny. No, thank you. We'll talk to you soon. Take care, buddy. All right. See you.